I'm Matt Bunger. I'm the state grazing land specialist with the Natural Resources Conservation Service uh, stationed out of Champaign, Illinois. I'm responsible for all the conservation grazing practices which involve uh, prescribed grazing, the fence standard, brush management, herbaceous weed management, pasture and hayland planting, and forage harvest management. Today we're going to be talking about uh, fencing. There's, there's a lot of different types. There's barbed fence, there's woven wire, and then there's the high tensile, which is here behind us. And there's also the, the practice of using temporary fencing in a, in a lot of the grazing operations these days. Uh, it just allows for that flexibility. Well, for cattle, there's really probably two main ones, barbed wire fence and high tensile. The sheep, small ruminants, uh, the woven wire fence is, is a good option, but also the high tensile wire fence works just as well, but you're gonna have to have a little bit more or a few more wires than what you'd have to have for your larger ruminants. Maybe uh, at least a six, maybe even a seven wire high tensile fence with the, with the bottom wires, probably uh, no more than six inches off the ground, probably four, four to that six inches and then another six and, and then a little wider spacing as, as you go higher. So what are the considerations that one should think about when they're going to be installing a, a new fence? Well, uh, first thing would be if it's an exterior or interior fence. With your exterior, there is the Illinois fence law, which requires a certain height and uh, number of wires. It goes back quite a few years. Uh, it talks about the barbed wire fence it has to be uh, four and a half foot tall uh, to meet that fence act. But, uh, you know, also other considerations, is it along the timber? Is it out in the open? Uh, if it's along the timber, you know, at some point you're going to have trees, limbs fall, and what type of damage will it do to the fence? Uh, on a high tensile fence, a branch falls on it. If by chance it breaks, which it probably won't, uh, you know, you can cut, cut the tree off and splice the wire and you're good to go. With a barbed or woven wire, there's going to be some restretching of the wire that's going to have to be done maybe in replacement of some post, but that would be probably with any fence. Other considerations, you know, if you're looking at the in interior fence is, you know, the flexibility in your operation. So, you know, maybe you want to put some permanent in there and then go with some more temporary divisional fences, which can consist of, of a lot of different products as well. There's poly rope and, and poly wire. There's electric netting, which you, you'll see a lot of the small or producers with small ruminants use that uh, netting. With your high tensile wire, uh, a single wire, you can have a stretch up to 90 feet between posts, I think. So that's that's a pretty good distance that you could you, you can move those posts and not have a permanent system that way. With uh, with NRCS, we do require everything. Um, if you're look, someone was looking at financial assistance, they would be looking at everything being up in a, as a permanent type system. Grant Bowman, uh, part of Bowman Family Farms, located in Vianna, Illinois, and we're a grazing operation consisting of cow calf uh, pears, grass finished beef, and then also developing breeding stock. So when we're setting up permanent fencing, you know, a couple things that come to mind are our time, cost, you know, and availability to product now. Um, you know, we want to have a good perimeter fence, but we want to do it for as cheaply as possible. Woven wire is your, your kind of your, your fortress, your sleep easy type fence. It'll work for all types of livestock. You don't have to worry about it. Other types are barbed wire, you know, and that's probably the most popular fence for a cattle operation. But we've had really good experience with high tensile, and if you go into smaller ruminants, you can just add a few strands on the, on the bottom, and, and it does a really good job containing them. So there are many op options with temporary fencing, and, and we actually employ those daily, you know, using step-in posts and reels, and even on our perimeters, we're putting some offset high tensile uh, on some areas that are hard to get a new and, and good permanent fence built. So there, there's lots of options that you know, keep you flexible.